All right, uh, Todd Gessley, thank you for coming in today. It was kind of a last minute. This is uh, the second conversation for consensus I'm doing here. Um, did one a couple of weeks ago with a, with a friend, and uh, I consider you a friend too. So tell us, uh, oh, speaking of friends, uh, I hope you're acquainted with my imaginary friend here, Kiva Sugarman who died in 1952, and he's with us today. And he was from Klamath Falls, is that correct? Right, yeah, he had a, he was, a, Kiva's, Sugarman's Corner is at the site where his clothing store was, so. Okay, he did shoes and clothing there, and. Yeah, men's clothing, and yeah. his motto was, I'm not mad at anybody. Yeah, he got some attention for that one, yeah. <laughs> That's a great slogan. I <laughs> yeah. wish more of us could, could live by that. Yes. Very true. I, I I aspire to it, and I know you do too. So tell us about this fellow here running for a commissioner. Well, I'm Todd Gessley, and I'm running for position three county commissioner. I've moved to Klamath Falls about three years ago um, during COVID. Um, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an international uh, <laughs> photographer and I and a producer, and I just couldn't go anywhere, so I sold my home in Oregon City. Moved my wife and I down here. We caught COVID, checked into Sky Lakes, oh, God. and uh, had the long COVID version, but uh, recovered and uh, said, said, hey, what can we do for our community? And uh, decided to get involved, and I ran last time. Had a great time getting to know the county, getting to know each of you, the farmers, the tribes, the uh, the business people here in town, the kids, the high schools, the education. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was just a great experience running. Pushing for voter voter transparency or election transparency last time as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, back, that was uh, just about exactly two years ago. I was getting some traction, f found uh, something uh, I've been working on this civics problem in our country since uh, sometime in 2015, I guess, and uh, really kind of got going in uh, spring of 22, and. Uh, Began, I was working with Braver Angels, as you remember, and I reached out to all the commissioner candidates. And I remember you, Todd, because um, most everybody either didn't answer or said, uh, you know, may, whatever. You said, come on over now. I said, be here in five minutes and, and, yeah. and come to my house. It took me like 15, but I was there and I... That, and uh, I've been to your home many times since then. You're a very open-hearted person, Todd, and I, I mean that. And uh, I, I I won't go on too much more here because it's, it would be kind of showing patronage, I'm afraid. But, um, yeah, that, I, I want to also, um, before I forget, which I did last time, there are uh, four fundamental questions that uh, Kiva gave to me one night. And... Um, it uh, kind of uh, the idea is to kind of get our conversation on a uh, loose footing, <laughs> on a, maybe, a, but on a, on a very wide foundation. So you know what the four questions are, and and uh, expect brief answers. And if you go too long, we'll cut you off like the commissioners would. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the things I'm running to. Ch I, I would like to change. Give you five minutes to speak rather than 90 seconds. But yeah. Go well, ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, so what is it you fear most about our future? Well, I, the one thing I, I just don't understand and I really don't like is war. You know, war is such a terrible thing. It's a terrible experience. And it makes not a lot of sense. So uh, I think it's really important, uh, whether it's Rwanda, whether it's Ukraine, whatever, that we we uh, try to try to work that out without shooting at each other and, and all those kinds of things. Great. So, um, <clears throat> what do you believe that uh, you or and or humanity can do about this problem with war? With war. It's it's usually propaganda or patriotism that gets out there. Now I'm all for being patriotic. Uh, I I love being American, but sometimes when you're traveling internationally and you see some of the impacts and how we come across to other cultures and we poke our nose in places where we don't belong, um, I think we need to stay home. In some some cases, we don't make things any better um, by interfering with other peoples or other countries. So I'd like to see that change. If we want to influence the world 
in a better, better way. Ten seconds. All right. <laughs> we would uh, not tax Americans for what the money they make overseas. Interesting. But anyway, we will get to local issues here, but I appreciate your global perspective. You're welcome. Uh, what do you think of uh, humanity in general, the human human being? Well, we're made in God's image, and when we forget that and and misrepresent how he made us to be kind and caring and full of love and 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 kindness and joy and when we when we destroy our bodies and do other things that with drugs and whatnot you know that's that's humanity tends to tends to spiral at times so um i i love humanity i think we're yeah. made we're made wonderfully and uh, I always take people right where they're at and try to think the best about them until they change my mind. And that's how we got where we are today, was every bit cooperating with one another, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, so um, what do you think of yourself in this, uh, your role in this big picture of humanity, war, and uh, bringing about peace and tranquility in the universe? <laughs> Well, Klamath, Klamath County is a complicated place. It's a special, yeah. it's a very special place. It means a lot of things to a lot of people from recreation to farming to tribes. And um, our history hasn't always been the smoothest. And we still have, we're still faced with challenges. Do I have all the answers? No, I don't. But I am a neutral person coming here without any of the old money or any special interest. 15 uh, seconds. You know, <laughs> reaching into me. So, um <laughs> I, I think I can represent you and listen and try to find some solutions going forward. I know if we keep doing the same thing we've been doing, uh, we're going to get the same results. So elect somebody new. Okay, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so it, how did that go, the election last time? What did you learn from that back in 2022? Well, I was the new guy in town. Nobody knew me. Um, I came in fourth. I spent 300 bucks on my election. <laughs> I was just really doing it to get to know you guys. And now that I have got to know you, I think I can come back and, and really, really make a difference uh, this time around. So that's why I'm running against the incumbent. I believe politicians need to get changed off and like diapers. <laughs> okay. Well, we won't go any further with that metaphor, but uh, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and uh, yeah, there was a uh, I, I got involved particularly in the last summer in the library matter and let uh, let the commissioners know exactly what I thought about that. Can you speak to that library censorship issue and and if you want the jet on the stick and there whatever else was going on here recently? Well, freedom of speech is important. The challenge is is that when you take federal money, you have to there's strings attached. And uh, so, you know, let me just ask you, what have the commissioners besides, what have they really accomplished in the last four years, five years for the people? Have we provided better services? Have we, have we reduced taxes? Have we had less government interference? Have we provided better services? Um, you know, what have we done for crime? And we kind of, you know, they kind of got over their skis with the sheriff's issue. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. So, you know, I'm not saying... I mean, mistakes will be made. We'll all learn, even if I'm in office. I mean, it takes a while uh, to become effective and, and really do this. But, uh, you know, there's 27 or so different departments that we have to, that commissioners have to oversee and run. And a lot of people think we can deal with water and, and deal with all these things that are not, that, that really aren't in our job. Just because we have the name commissioner, you know, <laughs> they think we can solve it all What our super, with superpowers. And so I'm not saying that, you know, that, but... I'm just what I am saying is is that if you want the same results, put the same people back in office. Okay. But if you don't, then look at the two options that you have. You know, I, I, this just came to mind, Todd, and I'm going to kind of spring one on you here, but I I think you're prepared for it. I remember it was probably 20, 30 years ago. Um, uh, rep uh, somebody asked a presidential candidate if, if they'd ever made a mistake, and. Uh, that person couldn't come up with an answer. Do you have an answer to that? Your a mistake you've made. My mistake probably has been just to try to stay neutral and not build a campaign committee behind me. Um, you know, if so at this point, I'm 
I didn't decide until the last minute, and I went out and got all my votes. All my, I mean, all my signatures, <laughs> you, uh, not votes, you but paid, signatures. You paid them off. <laughs> I, I didn't pay my 600 bucks. I went down Main Streets. I spent four days, and I got my 260, because I want 69 signatures in order to get my 200 that I qualify. I value getting out and talking to people and hearing, because otherwise I can't represent you if I don't know you. So I put out my phone number on all everything, my cell phone number. I'm approachable, just like Chuck. I come over to my house, sit down in my living room, let's talk, um, or I'll come to you. So I'm involved. If you've got an issue in this county, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm not aloof like <laughs> our current <laughs> group of, uh, or, or too busy like some of our, our, our current commissioners. I'm approachable, and so I want you to remember that. Thank you, Todd. And uh, uh, all right, um, I, I wanted to um, acknowledge here uh, my friend Kiva also delivered another message to me uh, to uh, take a look at the preamble to our Constitution. And uh, so you don't have to look at it up there. I wrote it down okay. on the other side. Mm -hmm. And um, would you rather I read it or would, would you rather read it? Oh, you go right ahead. Okay, I'm going to add some uh, emphasis on parts that I think a lot of people forget. The more perfect part. Well, that's one of it, yeah. We the people of the United States, well, there we go, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, and here come my three favorites, ensure domestic tranquility, Provide for the common defense. Now that's one that to take very seriously. And you mentioned wars. Boy, we have a we have a military defense that could take over the world, don't we? Uh, well, and promote the general welfare. Who would think that our founding fathers believed in welfare? You know, I'd be like feeding hungry people, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. That sounds like a real visionary mission statement for a government that I would like to have run my universe. <laughs> uh, any, any, uh, embellish on that for me. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we need to remember that that's what's important. It isn't the UN 2030 agenda <laughs> okay. coming over on top of us. I mean, there's some good things there that we can look at and learn from, but I don't think we have to adopt word for word we have we have very simplified manner what our you know what our leaders that founded this country uh, laid out for us I think it comes now when you come back down to county government you know we've got no job descriptions for commissioners can really? you believe that well yes I can <laughs> so so I think there's you know some of that needs to be defined as well um, of course it's it's a pretty broad position but yeah um, you know, county bylaws and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I wonder if it comes as close to that. I'm, I'm learning as I go through this process. Yeah, and we spoke just for a few minutes here about, I, I just, I've been researching what, how, how to go about governing a, anything pretty hard and heavy since about 2015. And it wasn't until December of last year I learned about what appears to be an international movement called deliberative democracy, which just means people getting together and deliberating and talking about stuff. Kind of the jury system. Well, yeah, and the jury system, good example, thank you. A jury is selected at random. Correct. Uh, yeah, good, good, good So we have that here in the United States. We just don't use for it a jury. For, <laughs> for a jury and no. for court side, but maybe not for political debate. We tend to, at least in this county, they set up committees and pick their friends. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, you saw you know, Hensley pick his dad to be on his own committee, and then a few of us said, uh, that's nepotism. And then, and then he learned friends. something, and then he comes <laughs> around and he says, you know, the sheriff has nepotism. So, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how it goes yeah, around. Yeah, it is around. kind of funny. But Sorry yet, to interrupt. No, but. no, you, 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 I, no you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the Athens, uh, the ancient Greeks, they, they call it sortition, which is, you know, like random. Of course, it wasn't exactly random because the only people eligible were, you know, kind of like me, white hair, white uh, slave owner, property owners, and stuff like that who were eligible, eligible to be members of the Senate. But 
they we'd all show up, you know, and and uh, sit in sit in rows, and uh, they some kind of a random thing where somebody would draw a, a letter and a number, maybe like a Jack Bowie, anyway. But so that row, three rows at random, would be members of the Senate. And that is the kind of thing that the Deliberative Democracy Lab in uh, Stanford has done in this country as well. But in examples like this have been going on. They're doing some studies and finding unity. So yeah, they're finding that these these groups get together. They uh, have uh, problems. Yeah, well, yeah. They one of the other parts is that. Uh, Parties on both sides, experts on both sides, conservative and liberal usually, mm -hmm. uh, work out the best evidence for and against a case. All these participants are paid to study this material, and then they're brought together in conversations to – moderated conversations. Well, we kind of have that with the House and the Senate, so to speak. I mean, uh, well, kind of – come on. <laughs> <laughs> so so are, you, are you suggesting that we use some of this kind of uh, format for local county um, – Participation is that well, what you'd like to see happen well, here? Yeah, but problem. What the, what they talk about at Stanford and other places is to have to do a, a parallel kind of thing. You know, do do Congress the way you do it, but then do this sort do experiments with this sortition thing, and uh, do these exercises, and um, then the public can pair who makes the best decision. Is it is it uh, Congress or was it a group of their peers? I see. And, uh, That's a pretty so, extensive uh, proposition you've got there to run two parallel together. But, yeah, well, it, but, it would sure be a yeah be a lot less lobbying going on. There, you know, you know uh, there there are many there are some problems with it, but well, you got yeah. some advantage. That's good to think about. Yeah, uh, the one thing that strikes me that we could change pretty quickly here is is I don't like the ninety seconds that people have to speak where they come <laughs> to the commissioners. I'd like to see at least you know four to five minutes. Given, uh, I mean, I've, I'm here to listen, and I just don't want, you know, people, the citizens come in. It's intimidating just to have 90 seconds to say your name and state your problem or state your idea. So, um, you know, I'd like to get a better glimpse of that. Not everybody will use their five minutes either. Uh, they'll get up, say what they need yeah. to do, and sit down without the stress, especially if you drive in from Bonanza or Crescent. I mean, you drive down here and you get 90 seconds to speak. I mean, come on, that's, that's <laughs> you well, know. Another thing might be, I believe it was last year uh, our county commissioner spent $66,000, I believe that's what one of them told me, on um, this uh, Five Pillars of Society or something report that uh, some planning group came up with. I bet for $66,000 you could uh, fund a project like I'm talking about with 70 people drawn at random around Klamath County, bring them together, educate them on this, you know, bring together experts locally uh, and educate people on this information. They meet and divide into groups. Their procedures all set up for this, been tested and proven to work. And uh, then you don't have to listen to some Chuck Edson up there bitching at you for three minutes, but you could listen to a consensus from a group of citizens who participated and deliberated in this. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah. So just do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure about all the implementation aspect of that, but we can talk some more when we're off air. Okay. Well, yeah. And uh, this is this is something I'd like the community to talk about and get behind. And my gosh, Todd, thank you for helping me get to this. I wasn't talking. I wasn't thinking of this has been on my mind. I didn't think we'd talk about it today. Okay. Now, help me out of this and tell me about yourself and your campaign. I've been an Oregonian 44 years. Uh, moved here again three years ago. Just fell in love with Klamath Falls. My wife and I would like to make this our forever home. Thinking about that, we think we need to get involved. And uh, we've got a 17-year-old son who uh, goes to Eagle Ridge uh, High Charter School here in town, and he loves it. He left a little bit to go to go to school in Oklahoma at the beginning of this year, and he said, nope, Oklahoma's not for me, February 9. He <laughs> called and said, I'm homesick, coming back. <laughs> so uh, we, we all three of us uh, really enjoy being here. My background is mass communications, media, 
Um, I've worked as a CEO, entrepreneur, and uh, also chief business officer, board member, chair, uh, chairperson for uh, lots of nonprofits and faith-based organizations. So uh, that's kind of, a, in a nutshell, a little bit about a little bit about me. Yeah, and I remember uh, you're a Seventh Day Adventist, Adventist, and uh, how, I wondered how is it the Gregorian can calendar that got you guys messed up about what day of the week? <laughs> I mean, I'm you know trying trying to be humorous here, but uh, but uh, I know very little. I'm very naive about religions, except very generally about you know the major ones, uh, Judaism. Anyway, but. Uh, but uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Seventh Day Adventist. I believe you have a particular practices in diet, maybe. Well, a lot, lot of um, our founder, um, who put the uh, started the church, count, had some counsel on being, you know, vegetarian. Um, saw the saw the slaughterhouses and how all the stuff that was going on there. And I think all of us, if we start go to go to Walmart or go to Fred Meyer's and you flip around, and start looking at all the processed food uh, <laughs> and all the stuff that's in there, it's shocking. And so I think she was way ahead of her time. You, Climate Falls is big into the blue zone. You said she. I said she. Yes, Ellen Ellen G. White was one of the founders. Oh, of, of a the female founder of, of a religion. Correct. Wait, no, wait a minute. There's some mistake here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I, there, I'm sorry. I was surprised by that, and also gladdened. You know, Mother Nature. That's my God. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, Please go on. Seventh Day Adventist means the seventh day part means that we worship on from Friday night till Saturday night, sundown. Um, which is which is uh, you know if you if you look at the Gregorian calendar or the Jews who are very meticulous about tracking time, um, you know, they, they also worship on the, the seventh day. Uh, Sunday is the first day. And so, you know, that's, that's we just try to follow the, the commandments, which say, remember the, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. You can't work your way to heaven. Salvation's a gift. Yeah, that, that, I wanted to ask about salvation, salvation too. Salvation is a gift, and uh, our works, but, but, you know, my God likes pancakes. Why am I going to make waffles? <laughs> so that's where that comes. And the Adventist part means that the Adventist part means that we're we, we're looking forward to the advent of Christ coming back visually where every eye will see him, as it talks about in Revelation. And so uh, you know, get ready. Get ready. Yep. On the Revelation part, does that include the Armageddon and all of that? Correct, yes. And mm -hmm. uh and it's the the, the 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 beginning, the book of Genesis talks about and Revelation are kind of parallel prophecy books. Um, it's all about worship in, in, in Genesis. You know, Cain and Abel, will you worship me with the way I ask? And will you give a lamb as a sacrifice or will you bring fruit? And so that was an issue of worship. The very first killing was murder was over who you're going to worship and how you're going to worship. You go to that Revelation. That was the Cain and Abel. Cain and, Cain and Abel, yeah. And you go clear to Revelation and you see that it's again, it's about worship. Are you going to worship? Uh, you know, do you want to avoid the mark of the beast or do you want to, you know, worship? And, and it says, blessed yeah. are those who read these words in Revelation. So, yeah, it's, it, I, I, like I, I didn't want to talk about the tie between religion and wars, but I think we're hitting on that a little bit now. Or am I wrong about that? Well, I mean, most wars are politically based. Um, and religion, yeah, I think. I mean, help well, me. in, in, I mean, are you in the Old Testament? where you had a theocracy where God was in charge, where he had his pillar of fire right there. And, yeah. and, and he said, follow me. I'm your air conditioner. <laughs> and I'm also also your nightlight. He put together, you know, the tabernacle and all those emblems all pointed forward to the Messiah coming in the promise of, of, of him restoring humanity and giving us salvation. I like that part. Yeah, I do too. And yeah. it was good. It, it, and then once he died, when he died on the cross, that temple was ripped from top to bottom. The, the, uh, the veil in the temple between the holy and most holy place was ripped top to bottom uh, with uh, unseen hands. Well, uh, you lost me on what was ripped and what boundary was removed. Or well, what? in the in the temple, there's a holy and a most holy place that was divided. Holy and most holy. Place. Most holy. Yeah, and um, and so um, when when Christ died. The angels ripped that ripped that open, so you could see all the way in and see God's grace on the mercy seat. Ah, all right. And um, 
But those priests just, they liked their salary. They went and stitched it back up. And, and as Jesus said, 70 years later, um, he would destroy Jerusalem and because they, they did not accept him as the Messiah. So, you know, when it comes down to wars, yeah, God fought a lot of wars. He looked out for his special people, the Jews, um, and the Jewish people in Israel um, multiple times. He, he sent his angels out and destroyed their enemies, and he fought their battles. So, you know, what kind of God do we have? We have a God who loves us. He wants us to follow him. Um, he, he wants us to he will, go to war? No, he will he does not. He says, yeah. thou shalt not murder. So, okay. you know, um, but at the same time, he says, you know, you, you, you have to protect your family, protect your, your country. So I think we need to get along. And, and some of these borders that we draw, we need to protect them. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a... I believe if you're going to do immigration, you come through the come through the door, fill out the paperwork, do it, come through the front door. Don't don't sneak in. Yeah, laws, laws of man are definitely. Well, we God had God had God had some simple observations. You know, he had to love your neighbors yourself. Yeah, that's his golden rule. That's that's the one thing I want to do here in Klamath is teach us to love each other as much as much as we can. And I'm not here to be in a political office to put my put forth my my spiritual beliefs. But they do, they do uh, influence how you treat other people and where you see your role. Yeah, I've always, I've always regarded you, Todd, as a person who was very accepting and open of other people's opinions. And, like and circumstances <laughs> in life, in circumstances in life, whether you're yeah. the unhoused person at Walmart or whether you're, <laughs> whether you're the county commissioner, you deserve respect. And I hope I, hope I give that respect. I talked to Derek DeGroote, the, who I'm running against, the incumbent the other yeah. day. And I said, you know, the reason I'm running is because you have a way of handling grumpy people. I said, I said, I, you know, I hope I'm up to the job of having angry people that are dissatisfied with something come at me and tell me about their situation. Because obviously I didn't know about your situation until you came to me. And then I hope I can find a solution to help, you know, serve you in some way. Um, yeah. And and I told Derek, I said I'm running because I've seen you model that out there. So I'm I'm talking up my yeah, I'm no, talking but, up Derek. No, you're not. You, have you seen him model it in a positive way? Is that what you're? Asking? I have, yeah. Okay. Especially at the meeting out in Bonanza. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I don't always agree with all the decisions that have been made and and the track record necessarily, but at the same time, who's to say I'm going to have a better track record? Maybe you want to reelect Derek because he's just now becoming effective at what he does. He knows who, how to get the right decision makers in a room and make a room, make, make decisions. And that's what, that's what our job is. And like you were saying, Chuck, we've got to get the right people in the room to make the decision. My concern is, is that we get different people in the room to make the decision. Uh -huh. We're together on that one for sure. Because for if sure. we keep make, getting the same people and if it's the good old boys system or the same business owners, in the room, and I'm not trying to exclude anyone. I still want everybody involved, but I think the contracts that we give out as a county should not be a, to a monopoly. They shouldn't oh, yeah, be to yeah. the same people, you know. Um, so I think you maybe appreciate that. I'm not being disrespectful to those of you that have lived here for years and years, and you you have friendships and you have a network and you're doing things, you're doing well. But I think we need to open up and give opportunities to those new businesses and the new folks that that. Um, are on the edge that want to contribute. Let's not let's not be a click. Let's open it up as much as possible, um, even if it takes us longer to get the longer to get things done. Please explain. So Klamath rises for me. Well, when I first came here and I realized that there is no such thing as a Klamath Falls, it's all covered up in the Link River. <laughs> um, you know, I thought you know we've been falling for a long time, um, and and in order to have unity. We have to talk to each other. We have to respect each other and come together and and get to know each other and and uh, do that. So, county government's just one of those methods, and and I'm sure I'll be overwhelmed and just if 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 elected. Uh, but at the same time, I have dealt with difficult people all my life. I've dealt with budgets. <laughs> I've dealt with making plans and stakeholders. I'm a project certified project manager. I'm a general contractor. I've got my my insurance license here in the state of Oregon. Those are the two things I've done since I've been here. Is I like learning, and so I'm always learning new things, and I love learning about this county. I I learned uh, I learned how to get along with people working with criminals. Come on, now you talk about difficult people, <laughs> but never mind. Uh, actually, most of them are good people too, but mostly 
dangerous to themselves. But there are some notable exceptions. And well, I'm excited that we're look that you know the bill uh, 4002 is passing. Um, it looks like oh. it's, it's on its way to help reverse and modify Measure 110, where we get oh, a little wait. more probation. And uh, you know, I voted for that stupid thing because it said it said rehabilitation and treatment right in the title, and it. I thought it would be like, uh, you know, alcohol diversion. Mm -hmm. The people would have to go. To, no, they, you just get a citation, and they nobody sees of you again. Measure one ten was, I think, a complete snow job. I really do. In terms, well, I'm of, not sure that Bill. There's sixty, sixty three, sixty four pages on this thing, and yeah, I yeah. haven't had a chance to read through all of it. But I'm concerned that they buried some stuff that really took the teeth out of it, and I'm not sure that things are really going to change. But I don't think the methods are going to figure it out and read it all. And so, but, you know, I'm just saying, I, I want to see the final bill. I, I, I wasn't happy with the draft. So I'm, I'm very excited to read the final version. I know I spoke to a fellow I know that's in the substance abuse field here pretty well, a hockey story. And he, uh, his complaint is that uh, all the alcohol and drug substance abuse money goes to the Willamette Valley, and we hardly get any. But Well, the thing know, I don't she's... like about it is they're saying that each county has to figure out how it's going to do it. it it's not, so it's not a uniform law from county to county on how it's going to be executed, Bill uh, 4002. And that concerns me because I think if we're going to have a plan, it needs to be the same across all counties. Now, maybe with the way we implement it, we could you know have some room yeah. in there. But um, I'm just not sure that the money is going to flow from the state down to the local level. The There's way it lots should. of lots of evidence for how to do a, an effective substance abuse. Well, program. you're an expert in that in that field. Yeah, and Chuck. mandated treatment works. Right. So, well, let's just see how it works out. Something, at least it's a step in the right direction and we'll have something to modify and, and work on. So I'm excited about that because drugs and crime are a huge issue here in, in Klamath. That's something we need to look at and, the, and also how we deal with our unhoused and maybe a anti-panhandling law would help our nomads move on because they can't stand out there and hold a sign. And we as citizens are the ones that would get fined if we're passing money out the window. Um, you know, now getting out of your car and walking up to them separately, I think should be all right. But, um, you know, I don't know, maybe I have, don't have all the answers. Homelessness is a big, big subject here. I think the substance abuse one is, I, uh, until uh, recently, I was working with a fellow who had an office here. He doesn't want me to use his name, but his business is Hands of Service. And uh, he made me promise to uh, do some kind of production on homelessness here. And uh, he is a person who uh, has been homeless recently. And uh, uh, due to an accident where he was deprived of oxygen and suffered some, you know, cognitive losses and emotional controls and stuff. But uh, he uh, he's really attuned to the needs of uh, homeless people and I've just begun to dig into that, and I stopped and talked to a homeless guy the other day, and it's amazing how, you know, I think the potential service that these people could provide if we just just unleashed it and said, hey, you know, we'll support you. Just do something you want to do that doesn't hurt, you know, well, helps, and I think they would do a lot. Klamath Works, I just want to say Klamath Works and Reach are doing a great work here in town with helping those folks. They can walk in the door and go to work if they're willing. Um, so that's that's a resource we have. The Thrive Warming uh, Center over at the church uh, is is done a great job. The Gospel Mission um, is there right. as well. And so we do have some great resources here for folks. Um, I've talked to a lot of business owners and, you know, just if you're going to be homeless here in this county, at least pick up after yourself. Um, you know, try not to leave a mess, please. Our, our business owners, they work hard. Um, and, uh, you know, try, not, try to pay for the stuff at Walmart if you can. Oh, yeah. The, you know, the, yeah, that, there, there is or, that. Um, or, you know, the self-checkouts. Be honest, guys. Let's. If you want nicer stores here and you want Costco to come eventually, then let's behave. Let's not, you know, if the word gets out that retail theft is so high, 
we're not going to get any new stores here. Yeah, in town. And so help us commissioners out. It's not just up to us, you know. It's it, it's up to you, the citizens, to to make it attractive. If they said, you know, if, if the word got out that hey, retail theft is down in Klamath, I think we could have a lot easier time bringing in some of these stores. But right now, it just doesn't pencil for a lot yeah, of places I, unless they already exist. I haven't heard about this lately, but I've I've heard you know news broadcasts out of Portland and other, I guess, progressive areas where um, basically there's no enforcement of shoplifting. The people can just walk out with what they want almost. And That's and, true uh, here. I mean, is Michael's it, is the it, biggest thing that walks out the door. The little I was asking, talking to the gal, she goes, they come in, they buy, they walk out with our $10 jewelry, you know, because it's something they can use and sell later. Um, yeah, well, that's that, a common thing that gets stolen. Um, yeah, that's, that's, the Penske yeah. trucks over at... Um, Got their got their tanks drilled the other night, and all their diesels, you know, taken out. Yeah. So you know that's that's a thousand dollars to replace a tank yeah. like that. And so by, I mean, uh, my my son-in-law lost a catalytic converter. Yep, started up his car, and that was quite a, <laughs> quite a noise. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it um, and I've also started watching. I forget the name of the YouTube thing about. Hobo lifestyle back in the depression. Oh, it's and, always been here. Yeah, people but, yeah, ride the rails. Yeah, but these, I don't think then they were stealing stuff, and they were, they were more. I don't know. Probably, certainly some were, but, and but you know, going around and doing itinerant jobs, doing a little carpentry project. I have no getting problem with free meal. range, free yeah. range citizens. I yeah, love free range go. citizens, but um, you know, be respectful. That's what I ask. Yeah, true. And uh, I'd like to see. I mean, uh, Nikki's done a great job with the food bank. Oh, um, Nikki, yeah. Yep. And uh, what's her last name? Nikki? I don't remember. Uh, anyway, I, I know her as Nikki. She's really bubbly and happy and retiring and trying to train in the new CEO there. But I'd like to see us not just do food boxes where food gets, I don't like this, and it gets chucked. I'd like to see us now have let's a Let's little... not use the word chucked, would you please? <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> um, yeah. Tossed. Yeah, tossed. There you go. But, you know, something more of a like, little store where the Asians can go in and get rice, the Mexicans can get beans, and the Russians can get their cabbage, you know, so, you know, for borscht. But, yeah. uh, you know, those are some things that we can look at and also have an hours at the food bank would be awesome if we could extend that somehow, find a budget to extend it so that it's into the evening. Because if you're working days, uh, it's impossible to get, get over there. The other thing is folks that have been burned out of their homes up in Bly Mountain, the fire victims. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the, those that didn't have insurance or those that are in the process of rebuilding um, to, to get permits. And, and now they're being fined, you know, by the county uh, $700 a day for being out there and squatting on their land that they already own. That there's something's wrong with that. We need to look at we need to look at somehow a homesteading, uh, you know, thing for the folks that are actually own their property so that they can get back on their feet. Because if you've got a $19 job, you know, here at the auto parts store. Uh, you know, and you're driving back and forth, your money goes into gas and you're lucky if you get a sandwich for lunch that you can afford yeah. to get back and live in a hundred, hundred to 400 foot shed, you know, up there and try to make it, it's tough. Yeah. We've got some tough people in this County and we need to look out for them and try to find a way to help them and encourage them. Um, Boy, I, I'm thankful every day for the life I've led. And I want to thank the taxpayers of Oregon for the, the life I lead now with, the. Uh, uh, PERS and so forth. Uh, thank you. Keep working. Keep paying your taxes. Uh, well, Todd, uh, I think we should be closing up, but I want to give you a chance to uh, make your own appeal on uh, whatever. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, you can check me out at my website, electtoddg.com. Learn more about me. My phone number, 503-348-8652. That's my cell. And uh, I look forward to getting to know you, looking to know the issues and the solutions that you have for this county. Thank you. And you can check us out at uh, kivascorner.com, correct? And, uh, and I'm available too, 541-591-1921 or kivascorner at gmail.com. We're looking for, we're, we'd really like to get somebody to help us with editing video content and other things to be a chance, a good opportunity to learn. Thanking Jude here for all that he's doing for us, and Logan for directing me. With and the Klamath Film. Yeah he's, yeah, he's with the Klamath Film. Klamath Film. There we Klamath go. Film. I got it. I wanted to add another word, but it's just Klamath Film. So. And Jude with uh, the World of Archive. <clears throat> 
and uh, me with uh, Kiva's Corner right here. Here we are. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, thank you, Todd. There you go. So uh, we're, we're building it and uh, would like to turn this into a private nonprofit foundation. And uh, I want to turn it over to the you, the people, to continue this, to continue Kiva's work. Thank you, and tune in next time. We ain't mad at nobody. We ain't mad at I'm mad, mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you.